Sunny California. Only here they have oil derricks instead of palm trees. Twenty miles inland in Los Angeles, they complain about the smog. Here nobody complains about it. They make it. This is no place to be broke. Not that any place is Shangri-La when you're empty. But some places you can always find a way to make it, and nobody marks you lousy as long as you keep trying. Not California. Maybe it's the weather. Maybe it's too easy to stay alive when there's no more reason for it. Or maybe it's the people. They get a pretty odd crew in California. In the good old USA, whenever people want to run away from something, or someplace, or somebody, the escape route is always west. Maybe that's the reason California gets the oddballs. Like me. Yeah, very funny. Just another dockside tramp. Good for a few laughs. I didn't care whether school kept or not. That was before I met Ricky. You? You're Pete Mason? You don't like it, I'll change it. Anything to please a lady. But they told me you were a marine engineer. They're right, I was. Oh, well, then perhaps it'd be better if we met in your office. Well, step right in. Mason always aims to satisfy. You're probably a very funny man in San Pedro, Mr. Mason. Yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe I'm not the guy you want to see anyhow. Maybe not. Wait a minute. You need a job? Lady, I don't need anything, but I'll, I'll take a job depending. You know him? Sam Quigley? Yeah. I was in the Navy with him. He was a lawyer in civilian life. My lawyer, or rather my family's lawyer. I'm Ricky Andre. My great-grandfather was Michel Andre. Does that mean anything to you? No. Strange. Sam said you knew the Caribbean. <laughs> I suppose I do, Miss Andre, but that was 10 years ago. I imagine your great-grandfather was dead even then. My great-grandfather was killed in the revolution in Haiti against the French. Well, what do you want me to say? I'm very sorry to hear that, Miss Andre, and nothing serious, I hope. Look, you've been ten minutes now telling me a, a guy I haven't seen for ten years is your lawyer and that your great-grandfather was killed 150 years ago. Now, what's the deal? Fifty dollars a week. And a percentage. A percentage of what? Of a million dollars in gold treasure. Oh, <laughs> well, what's so funny? You don't mean to tell me you've gone by one of those crazy maps. It's not a map, it's a letter, and I didn't buy it. It's been in my family since my great-grandfather died. Hey, wait a minute. Michel Andre, the Andre letter. I've heard about that someplace before. Your great-grandfather was a fence, right? A fence? Yeah, you know he handled stolen property back in the days and hijacking the king's gold was everybody's favorite pastime. It wasn't stolen. They were French merchant ships. French, British, Spanish, courtesy to all thieves. You know, I hope it doesn't run in the family. You know, your great-grandfather was pretty notorious. When he saw the revolution coming, he sent his family away to New Orleans. Then he hid his gold and wrote his last letter. The revolution came a few days later and he was killed. Yeah, that's a story I heard. Now every 10 years, some member of the family comes back to look for the gold. Uh, is this your first trip? I have the letter, but I need someone who knows the island. Sam Quigley said you were the man. Yeah, but I was a bum. See my pants coming out. 
Okay, what's next? I've chartered a boat from a man recommended by Sam. He'll hire you on as a crew member. Once we get to Haiti, you'll be working for me, of course. Of course. Okay. What's the boat and who's the captain? Come along, I'll show you. Isn't she beautiful? Yeah. I've seen her kind before. All clean and bright and pretty. And after two days now, you wish you were swimming. What happened, Mr. Mason? Did the world owe you a living and forget to pay up? That's about it, I guess. Well, do you want the job or don't you? This is Kirk Ellis's boat, isn't it? Yes, yeah. but what has that got to do with it? Well, we've had differences from time to time. You might have trouble getting me aboard. Don't worry about that. I have the Andre letter. Both Kirk Ellis and Sam Quigley are working for a slice of whatever we find. Well, then they both must know what's in it. They're gambling. No one but direct descendants have ever read the letter. It's the big family secret. <laughs> I can understand why. Okay, I'm all yours for 50 bucks a week. Wait here. Not exactly love at first sight when Ricky and I met. I figured it for a dizzy doll and a get-rich-quick expedition. And I know I didn't exactly look like Bond Street to her. Either she was a pretty good salesman or Ellis had his eye on that letter. He hated my guts, but he hired me. Well, you're on, Mr. Mason. Kirk won't be aboard until morning, but he asked me to get my things and spend the night on the boat so there won't be any last-minute rush. I'll be here at nine with my luggage. Well, look, as long as we're going to be in business together, why don't you call me Pete and I'll call you... Miss Andre. Yeah. I'll see you here at nine. thief, I guess. An uncommon thief, I'd guess. I have the Andre letter in here, and he was after it. Well, someone sent him. Look, this routine doesn't come regular with a job, I hope. You've been drinking? Yeah, for several years now. Hope to go on for a few more. Now, uh, are we finished with my private life? Is that included in the 50 bucks a week? Yes? I'm Kirk Ellis. I'm captain of this boat. I know. Let's get a few things straight, Mason. I don't think we need you along on this trip, and I told Miss Andre that when we discussed it yesterday. So? So we sail today. You can quit now if you want to, and there'll be no hard feelings. I'll pay you a month's wages, and I don't need you on this trip. And I can take care of Miss Andre and Haiti myself. You'll have a little cash for a big long binge in San Pedro. But I've heard you're not overly partial to work anyway. Miss Andre hired me. I think I'll stay on. It's your privilege, but remember one thing. 
On the Constellation, I'm the captain. You're working for me. Aye, aye, sir. A ship with her sails filled looks like a woman with her hair in curlers. But Kirk Ellis insisted on leaving when the tide was against us. We had to run out under power. After we'd gone aboard, I didn't see any more of Ricky for a while, and we never did find out who the uncommon thief was. I still have my own ideas on the subject. We had a long sail ahead down the California coast to Mexico and Central America, then through the Panama Canal to the Caribbean. If the constellation wasn't seaworthy, we'd be brushing up on our Spanish somewhere along the way. All right, mate, this is not a pleasure cruise. If you can't find something to do, I'll find it for you. Uh, turn two. Kirk Ellis and I had uh, never had what could be called uh, an argument. People talk about the chemistry of love. This was a chemistry of hate. Once free of the harbor, we cut the auxiliary and unfilled sail. Man, that you'll love it before we drift to Catalina! All right, all right, check your leg, Mason. You're not on the beach now. Kirk Ellis obviously had plans for me to play Mr. Christian to his Captain Bly. I wonder if he'd ever read the end of that story. Hey, mister. You got a dirty face. You'll pardon me if I don't rise to occasion. After all, you got me into this. Is it too tough? If you don't like it, you can always get out and swim. <laughs> I'd probably run around the nearest rock. Yeah, try. Just hold her steady. This is a beautiful ship, Kirk. I'm glad you like it, Ricky. I know she likes you. Oh, that's nice, though. You're not the first to go after the Andre girl, are you? What do you know about the letter? Oh, oh nothing. Nothing, except that it's supposed to be the last thing that old Andre wrote. It's supposed to have some clues about the gold. Why do we always think of people who lived in the past as old? Actually, Michel Andre was only 32 when he was killed. A very successful young man, I'd say. Sorry, they didn't look like the ideal couple to me. Everything I'd heard about Ellis around the hollow was now beginning to stick in my craw. I never learned what he did during the war, but I heard about a couple of fancy deals. And I know he didn't get the constellation out of inheritance money. Kirk Ellis was not my idea of a perfect companion for a treasure hunt. I kept wondering what would happen if we ever found it. Miss Andre. Have you had a difficult day, Mr. Mason? Let's just say I was a little out of practice. Hard work is an easy habit to lose. My habits are really none of your business. Unless that goes with the job, too. Sorry, I guess I was out of line. I need you as an ally, and I seem to say the wrong thing at every opportunity. Ally? If it's war, include me out. There's a lot of money involved. If you find the gold, if there is any gold. If I find the gold. What exactly am I expected to do in this whole business? You're well known in Haiti, and I need someone I can trust. 
How do you know you can trust me? Because you don't want anything. A person has to want something badly enough to be violent or dishonest to be untrustworthy. Whatever it was you wanted, I think you gave up a long time ago. Hmm. So I'm guide, bodyguard, and professional handholder. That sums it up pretty well, I guess. Do you mind telling me something? What are you doing this for? I mean, if you can afford this kind of excursion, you certainly don't need money. The truth is, I can't afford this kind of excursion. I'm a working girl, Mr. Mason. Secretary to the president of a stocking factory in Scranton, Pennsylvania. But your family... An thought... excellent family, but flat broke. I've saved two years for this. I've got six weeks of vacation accumulated and $2,000. You can sure think of better ways to spend six weeks, a couple of thousand bucks. I'm sure you can, for you. But have you ever been to Scranton? Have you ever sat over a hot typewriter week in and week out, seen the same dull faces and smelled the same dull factory smells? I don't think so. And you're not the type to get sick and tired of having your clothes covered with soot every day when you come home. And the hurry and push and shove of a thousand little meaningless lies. And the gold. What about the gold? The gold is all the tradition we've got left in the family. Someone has to go look for it every once in a while or we're liable to forget about it. But don't misunderstand me. I'd like to find it. And maybe I will. Then I'll never have to go back to Scranton. I can just stay on this boat forever. Ellis would probably like that just fine. I'm sure he would. Well, you can have them with six points. Keep the points, Mr. Mason. If I want him, I'll have him without your help. Kirk Ellis didn't impress me as a type for evening constitutionals. I wasn't worried about what he'd heard, but I couldn't figure out what he expected to hear. doesn't like you, huh? You're soft, Mason. You harbor bums don't get much exercise, do you? About as much as a yacht captain. Hey, you listen to me, mister. We got a long time on this trip, a long time. There's a lot of money in the pot, and I mean to get my share of it. No harbor bum's gonna foul up the detail. Now, you get that straight. You can take it one way or another. Tough or quit. I think you better quit. I'll do my job. All right. Let's be friends. Spend an awful long time in jail for mutiny, Mason. Like you said, Ellis. It'll be a while before we hit the beach. I get a long time to train for the rematch. Charming fellow. I knew then I'd let myself in for more than just playing nursemaid to a pretty girl on a sailboat. At first, we made good time. There are a couple of places I'd like to have jumped ship. Sea Ateneo must be the prettiest town in Mexico. And the prettiest girls. Carinto, Punta Arenas look just as tempting. I should have gone. A lot of trouble would have been avoided, and I don't like trouble. But I figured to collect the 50 a week, show the sights when we hit the islands, and then escort her back to Scranton, PA. That's not how it turned out.
translation proved itself a couple of days out of Panama. He ran into a Chivasco, a vicious Pacific coastal hurricane. good shape. This was going to be our last look at home country. After this, we were strictly on our own. Ricky was giving Ellis the business, but good. Women. Who can figure? to squeeze through the ditch. We were all too busy with the constellation to think of anything else. And then we were on the other side. I had a feeling in my insides that the closer we got to Haiti, the sooner we'd see trouble. It came sooner than I thought. Secret is out. It's on the bunk. Well, makes two more of us who know what's in there. Me and the guy who took it in the first place. And maybe that makes it just you. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't take your letter. It was on the bunk. I did read it. Somebody else did too and put it back on the bunk. I think you'd better get off the boat when we get to Haiti. Me again, honey. You don't want me prowling around those islands with your secret up here. the rest of the trip was going to be lovely, just lovely. We were only two days out of Port-au-Prince and the whole bit was getting on my nerves. I had to talk to Ricky. Ricky! Don't be afraid. We'll be in Haiti the day after tomorrow. You will need me. And if I don't want your help any longer? Suppose I don't trust you. <laughs> you have no choice, baby. Like it or not, I know you're precious people. Look, Ricky. I don't want you to go, if there is one. I just came along for the ride. I suppose I'm a fool for buying your pack for trouble, but I'm going to do the job I was hired for. So I'm stuck with you, is that it? Any problems, Ricky? None that I can't handle myself, thank you. Apparently, you can't take a hint, Mason. You'd be doing yourself a big favor to get off this boat in Haiti. I don't start many jobs, Ellis, but the ones I do, I like to finish. I think I'll stay a while. All right, suit yourself. But I'll guarantee you'll regret it.
Hello, Kirk. How's the Admiral tonight? Good evening, Ricky. How'd you know I was there? You're very quiet. So when everything is very quiet, I know you're there. If that's confused, it's meant to be, because I am, about a lot of things. Ricky, why don't you let me help you? I can prove who took the letter, even though we both already know. I don't know anything, Kirk. After all, what would it prove? I have the letter back. No, it's something else. Why don't you tell me, Ricky? I can't. I don't know. This all isn't turning out the way I'd planned. I'm trying to have the time of my life, and that's just not the way it is. Well, you get your hands on that gold, then you'll feel better. Hang the gold. I'm not sure I even expected to find it. Isn't that why you hired the big expert? He knows all the answers, including a few he's not supposed to know. I don't like that guy, Ricky, and I don't trust him. Why don't you get rid of him? You and I can go after this thing together. Now, while we're at it, I'll show you these islands like they really should be seen. You make it sound good, Kirk. I don't know. We'll see. Is that Haiti? That little patch of grass? Uh -uh. When you come up on Haiti in a boat like this, she looks like another continent. The sun burning down on her, all bright and green full of flowers and laughing people. And all the time, she seems to keep saying, go away from me, stranger, go away, because I'm evil. <laughs> and she is, you know. No, that's just an island I know pretty well. I had some friends there once. And I think that's where you go. You won't find a treasure on Haiti. Why? Why do you say that? Something in the letter. Fix it so we can get off from small boat before we hit Porto Prance. Then we can talk. Hello, Kirk. Well, did you tell him? Tell him what? That he's fired, of course. You get off the boat and port our plots, Mason. I'll see that you get passage home. Not yet, Kirk. I want my money's worth for Mr. Mason. But, Ricky, this guy's a no good harbor tramp. He's gutless and useless. We're lucky he stayed sober this long. <laughs> Even the sharks wouldn't have him. Ellis was in no mood to argue about the boat. The crew put us overside while the constellation anchored. This was my last chance to knock some sense into Ricky. It had to be good. Did you bring the letter? Yes, I keep it with me all the time now. Tell me something. Where has everyone else always looked for the gold before? On Haiti. Right. And no one's found it because it's not there. But maybe it doesn't exist at all. You said that yourself. That was then. Before I'd read the letter. In it, there's a passage that reminds me of something I hadn't heard for 12 years. You mean you think it's possible? That Michel Andre's gold is in these islands somewhere, not on Haiti. Why? The letter tells a story. I'm surprised nobody's figured it out before now. Remember that passage where he writes, um, In my image is the golden life. The sea is the harbor of safety. Remember that? Yes. What do you think it means? Well, I don't know. I never gave that part of the letter much thought. I, I just assumed it referred to his son. Maybe that's all the letter means. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. But when I was here in 1942, I made a lot of good friends, and I remember talking about a golden voodoo idol. You'll pardon me if I say so what? I've got a hunch there's a connection between the two and the reference to the sea. I think I've removed his gold from Haiti to one of these islands. This island. I'm scared, Pete. I, I, maybe I don't want there to be any gold. <laughs> You've got a point there. Now, with this far, how about going ashore? I'm scared of that place. 
Like it? I'm ready to go back any time, if that's what you mean. Do they have bugs here? <laughs> Phew. Snakes, too. Take it easy. We're not going there yet. How about a swim first? Now you're earning your money. of my life. A pretty sad story, if that's it. You'll pardon me if I always seem to be doing the wrong thing. Forget about it. I will. I'd been expecting it before this from one of you. And you wouldn't have minded it from Ellis. I didn't say that. Just you stay on your side of the fence and I'll stay on mine. I'm pretty slow about learning my lessons. But there's one I have learned. You're all the same, all of you. Some are just in a higher bracket than others. Now, you get this one thing straight, baby. We're both on the same side of the fence in this. And all your fancy ears and your fancy flat broke family don't make you one bit better than me. Kirk Ellis was right. You're a tramp, but no good. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry we didn't get off to a better start. Don't be sorry. Things are improving. What happened to you, Pete? A lot. When you got a spare week or two, I'll tell you. Tell me now. What about the engineer business? You had the right dope. I was a marine engineer before the war. Pretty good future, too. That got torpedoed along with a lot of other things. You wouldn't be suffering from chronic self-pity, would you? A lot of people got fouled up in the war. A lot of people got rich both in and out of the service. Anyway, when I got out, all the ships had been built, and the market for bright young men was flooded. Couldn't get a decent job anywhere. So you took your ball and bat and went home. That's about it, I guess. Oh, yes. It was also a young lady. When I got back, I intended to take her out of circulation. Somebody else beat me to it. She didn't even bother to write a Dear John. The landlady told me about it when I showed up to surprise her. Some surprise. So you drifted. So I drifted. On out to the coast, odd jobs here and there. Anything to stay alive. And then, suddenly, it was too late to straighten out. You see, Rick, I'm not exactly what you'd call a model citizen. There's time. Listen. 
They were on before. Surprised you didn't hear them. What is it? Maybe it's a Republican Party convention. It's a pretty good golf course in one of these islands. Don't make jokes, Pete. I'm scared. They're voodoo drums, honey. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they were talking about us. Let's get out of here, Pete. We won't learn anything by going back to the boat. We've got a couple of hours before dark. You up to taking a look? Let's pull the dinghy further up on the beach. Lower another boat. I'm going ashore. I'll go alone from here. very brave for Ricky, but it was just that, an act. Those drums worried me. Voodoo is a secret thing. read a menu, but not well. Uh, bonjour. Excusez-moi. Uh, my dad always told me never fight a man in his own territory. I didn't listen to him, and that's how I became a success in life. Can you find your way back to the boat? I think so. Good. I'm going to take a poke at our friend here, and when I do, you start using those 60-mile legs. Pete, he'll kill you. You know, that's possible. Well, <laughs> if 
that's the way you feel about it. Back to the constellation. What about Pete? We can't leave him here. Mason bought his trouble. Let him pay for it. No, Kurt. No. You go ahead. I'm not leaving here without Pete. Look, Ricky, it's getting dark. Let's lay off the beach if you want to till in the morning. Then we'll come back and get him. You go ahead. I'm staying. Are you in love with him, Ricky? I'm not sure. But I am sure of one thing. Pete knows where the gold is. You're a very clever girl, Ricky. Suppose we both go back and get Mr. Mason. Share the wealth, I always say. <laughs> for the woods myself. But then I began to get curious about the prayer meeting. It looked like Catherine Dunham in the floor show at Ciro's. Obviously, I wasn't invited to the party. They had a patch of grass reserved for guests. That's where they put me. Okay, Dad. What now? Uh, what happens after all that hiking? Don't I even get a merit badge? And a com pom pom. Swell. <laughs> Got a match? Chuck. Holly Chuck. Ben. And Christophe. So, Peter Mason, you have come back after all. <laughs> I've got him. What are we supposed to do? Risk our necks to go in there and get him? Risk our necks? Kurt, this isn't a hundred years ago. This is today. These people aren't savages. And don't forget, Pete knows where the gold is. Where gold is concerned, everybody's a savage. If we have any trouble, and that gold is still here, I'm not leaving without it. Now, you follow me. I don't trust your esteem for Mr. Mason. I've been expecting you for some time now. Well, he is moving pretty fast. You know how it is. I'm sorry I didn't let you know that we were coming. I knew you were coming even before you did. What does that mean? The girl left from New York. She tells a maid. The maid tells the porter. The porter tells someone else. Hey, with a system like that, you'll have to get investigated. Uh, what do you do here? 
Run the zombie concession? Always making jokes. You haven't changed, have you, Pete? Oh, a few more wrinkles, a few more beers. You shouldn't have come here. Yeah, I'm beginning to get that idea myself. But what about you? You remember my mother. The Marmaloy? She is dead. And now I'm the Marmaloy. You? Voodoo priestess? And if you take what you came for, I must have Jacques kill you. Then there is gold. Yes, there is gold. But it is forbidden. This is the Owl Door, the Golden Island. To us, it is sacred. We've been coming here since the Revolution. Others who come for the gold do not return. And if we take it? You will not even see it, although it's not so very far away. No, Pete. You will not take the gold. You see, they also know you are here. And they know why. Mason went, isn't it? Listen, Kirk, you're acting like a jackass. Let's find Pete and get out of here. Forget about the gold. Huh, so you and Mason can come back for it later? We're going to get that gold and we're going to get it right now. When we do, Mr. Mason can stay on this island and you're privileged to stay with him. If they don't finish him, I will. Kirk! Shut up and follow me and stay quiet. get you back here. Kirk, he was following us with a gun. Ricky, this is Anne Christophe. Christophe? Yes, Christophe. My great-grandfather killed yours. 
and the gold that was stolen is now in the hands of its rightful owners. That gold is mine. Ricky. I have a right, Pete. We've come all this way. 150 years, my family has searched for... Listen, Ricky. I'm with you. But you said yourself the gold didn't matter. It was something else you wanted. I didn't care then. I didn't believe it existed. But if it does, it belongs to me. Pete, Scranton is a long way away. I don't want to go back there. That gold is mine. If you go near that gold, you will die. I'm waiting for the lady, Anne. If she wants the gold, I'll help her get it. You will see the gold. The girl will go first. After all, she says the gold is hers. And you will follow behind with shock. If this is a trick... It's no trick. Shock! What about the others? Will you keep them off our necks? I will try. Do you think it's all right? No, I don't. But if we broke for the beach, he'd have us before we got a hundred yards. Wait here with Jacques. He will take you. while he sent Ricky on alone. I tried to vote against it, but he outvoted me with a couple of feet of cold steel.
okay now, Ricky. He's gone. Oh, please. Make it all right? Now we know what Michel Andre meant by this image in his letter. He must have had a replica of this thing in his house. Yeah, he brought it with his gold and a couple of slaves. Probably melted a cast from the old statue and poured the gold into it. Why didn't the slaves tell anyone? Your esteemed great-grandfather came back alone. Which might have come pretty, Mason. Now let's talk about the brotherhood of man. One of us is going to leave here with the secret of this statue. And I think it's obvious who that one will be. He's half gone. When I shout, you start running back to the beach. If I'm not there by sunrise. You wrote the consolation yourself. Now! <laughs> Of stock. They know we're gone. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, please. Us, the gold. Coming all this way and not finding it. It's so funny. Oh, please. Oh, oh Stop. Stop. Stop, Ricky. <laughs> been rough, honey. I mean, feel sorry for what happened to Alice. Listen to me, Rick. Maybe all the treasure in this world isn't gold. Maybe some of it is the simple lesson that y you can't, if you want something in this life, you've got to work for. You just can't go on hiding. When we started this, you said you didn't want anything. I do now. We didn't leave all the gold behind. I brought enough for a wedding ring. <laughs> 